the 1966 Alpine A210 by Union. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, race fans. Are you ready for another great unboxing right down here at Monster Hobbies? Well, today we have a special treat. This is the Alpine A210 by Union, a French race car that was pretty popular back in the day. Won a few trophies, I do believe. Google it. I could be wrong. Anyway, so here we are again in our race pits down here at Monster Hobbies. So before we actually open up the lid on this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes and pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you can join me right down here in the pit crew to put the tires on it. All right, race fans, enough stalling out on the line. Let's go down and open the lid on this amazing piece de resistance. So now we race back to the glory days of the 24 Hours of Le Mans for 1966. And in the French Quarter, we have the Alpine A210. This, of course, is one of the memorial collections. And it's interesting enough that it has French and Japanese written on it. Reproduction of the authentic uh, celebrated motor Berlinet motor, remote motor Okay, I won't translate the French. I almost had it. <laughs> okay, but anyway, here we see the 24 Hours of Le Mans. First, uh, here, and uh, 174 kilometers an hour must be the top lap for this car. All right, this is a Union model kit made in Japan. If you turn the box up and let all the parts fall down in there, you can see that we have the side view of this amazing car. And note the uh, cool kick up here on this rear quarter panel fins. These rear quarter panel fins. This is car number 45 on the box art. And of course there is our Union manufacturer logo here. Made in Japan, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I can't tip the box up this way. But basically the end of the box is much like the cover. And if we turn over here, we get a, a pictorial view of the type of tube framing we've got under here, which is pretty modern uh, back in 66. This would be sort of space age technology for race cars. And I do believe the tube frames are just starting to come in around this time period of the 60s. Uh, and then there's our body dropping on and we can see the engine is a rear engine which you get to see under the glass so very similar to much of the cars that were racing back in the 24-hour Le Mans in this time period unfortunately here's the history of it all which is covered by this Hobbycraft Canada sticker as well as it's all in Japanese so unfortunately I do not have a Google Translate sitting here for model kit instructions, so I can't really tell you what's going on. However, we can take the box top off. And this is quite a long, low box compared to our American-style AMT Ravel monogram-style tall and short boxes. And here we get this amazing instruction sheet. And I've had this model kit for a very long time. I bought this from a hobby shop that no longer exists. Ambleside Hobbies, September 24th, 1994, for $9.97, which now I, I can imagine this model kit would be about $30 to $45 Canadian. And again, unfortunately, all this is written with um, some English, some Japanese, and some French just all thrown together which is rather unfortunate, but at any rate, we'll look at the instructions in just a minute here. Uh, now this might have been packaged a little nicer, but I've looked at it a few times. Of course we have our decal sheet. But here is how the Japanese usually package their model kits. So they have this nice compartment up here for the body, and it's got this wonderful uh, like graphics in here. Photographs, photographics. <laughs> okay, anyway, but they're 
they're stapled inside here and you have to watch in the corners of the boxes for staples that are poking through. These parts would have been in plastic bags and they would have been stapled and lying inside. Um, but now they're just kind of dangerous barbs pointing out there. And of course we've got neat little components like these springs that are in these plastic bags and all kinds of other goodies. So let's move this stuff to the side and take a look at our instructions here. Now these instructions are much like your typical book, although they open up long ways. So you have this going on and then this one flips out. And then if we move it over here a bit, it flips out this way. So it's really one long continual sheet printed on both sides with some nice illustrations here on the back which then fold back up into a book. Okay, so we will look at these instructions here in a little more detail. Okay, so we start on page one. And I'll just zoom the camera in as best I can. Okay, so here, attention, read this manual through carefully before assembly. Separate the parts one by one. Don't separate all at once. And then it's showing here, separate the parts carefully by the use of a cutter or scissors. Mm, scissors. Has anybody snipped a model out using scissors? Uh, that would be uh, like, I can see younger modelers doing that, but like I'm talking to us professional guys that have done this for years. Okay, remove flashing properly. Use tweezers in handling smaller parts. Before cementing, scrape off metal plate plating from surfaces to be joined. So that's all the stuff they're showing. Okay, we have an elaborate parts list here. Let's just get a little closer in on that. A little bit closer now. Okay. So here it shows all the parts trees. So we get one, two, three, four, five, and our car body. There's also a deck all here. And like most Japanese kits, comes with a little teeny tube of glue. I think I've lost that over the years, but it was there. And then here, these are, I do believe, something you could buy for a certain amount of yen. I'm not sure what it would be, because I don't know my Japanese. <laughs> okay, so now we get into section number one. And this is a, a little bit interesting because they're showing you the underneath of the car or the chassis panel flat plate chassis of the car. See painting and remod painting and remodeling of chassis. It can assemble a car that you didn't remodel the chassis. Okay, so there's a little bit of English confusion going on here as to what they're talking about. But th what they're showing here is on this dotted line, you're actually looking at the top and the bottom of this at the same time. So it's saying to, um, okay, there's a, they have this thing here saying cutting line. You're supposed to cut this out along here for some reason. Um, yeah, there's a bit of confusion with this kit. That's kind of why I haven't built this thing yet. After owning it for <laughs> a very long time, like, 26 years coming up, I do believe, if my math is right. Uh, maybe 36 years. Oof. Anyway, so you're looking at this here, and there's a dot across here. So you paint alpine blue. This is the lower face, so when you turn the car upside down, this you're looking at the bottom. This is, you're looking at the top through the interior. So it says all face flat black. So you'd paint this entire thing flat black. And then underneath here, you've got your alpine blue in this gray section, and in the white section, that would be flat black. Okay, so here we've got our lower front valence panel, and there's some pieces of glue in here. I, I think you might have to cut those yourself, I'm not sure. 
out of like evergreen flat styrene. Same with this. These are uh, little tabs so that you can uh, attach your under panels to your chassis, I do believe. This is a very strange way to build a model car anyway. Um, all right, so then there's your body going down here as well. And then we get into these shock absorbers. These actually look to me like they would function because you've got a coil spring, you've got your top, you've got the little eyelet here, goes through a tube with this rod, and you're supposed to cement. <laughs> okay, this could be a, a tricky situation. You're supposed to cement this to that, I believe. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure on that. Because if you cement there and there and a little bit squeezes out, it'll glue right into this t plastic tube. So, <laughs> good luck. It says make four shock absorber. Z needs an S there. <laughs> Alright. Uh, okay, so now we get into the engine. And this uh, is a dual overhead cam four-cylinder with this amazing transmission, much like a Volkswagen, because keep in mind this is a rear engine car, so your engine will be, uh, I suppose this faces forward and you've got this transaxle in here through the center of the transmission. So anyway, they give you these a rubber thing here with the spark plugs on it and you just bend over your spark plug wires into the holes. This has the four little carburetors much like some of the British cars at the time. Like uh, Mini Cooper had this kind of setup. Although I don't think it bent down and pointed out. You know I think it kind of went straight out. You Mini Cooper guys would know the, uh, the setup on that. And so there's our engine block going together. This cylinder head popping on the top. Our um, timing chain cover going on here onto our oil pan. It says to paint it flat olive green, so at least we do have some paint colors. Uh, the transmission here is silver, or aluminum. It's probably more aluminum than silver. And then we've got these headers that come out. They look like just little wires going out of here. Kind of amazing. Goes onto that collector there. So then here we actually have posable front suspension. So it's showing here on the spindle, um, we've got these tie rod ends and uh, our front suspension going out on those tubes. It's all tubular front suspension. Um, probably a rack and pinion setup for your steering back then. Have to look up the real car. But anyway, so you take these front spindles and they've got these long pins on them. So the idea is to heat up the end of your screwdriver and then squash the little ends down onto your your uh, tie rods. So then they won't come off and you'll have your steerable, posy, posable front suspension. Now you gotta be careful not to squish this down too much or you're gonna like melt the two together and not be able to steer. Here's your radiator, a little tiny guy going on there. And then we have some more of the tube suspension. Or, sorry the tube frame and uh, here's our gear stick lever going on there okay so now we get into let's go this way with this so here's more of our front suspension these are those amazing shock absorbers you made up which will go in here there's a spot okay so there's a pin here which goes into the top and there should be one down here somewhere. It's not really too clear where this line is going, at least from my angle. Uh, but they should, they, I, I do believe that that's a pin and that's a pin. So they would go up in here at an angle. And here we've got our disc brakes and there's a pin sticking out of here. So again, we'll see how that comes through. We move this up a bit. I see our motor dropping into our chassis pan and there's our exhaust pipe sticking out there, which goes into those two holes and connects up with your header there. We've got this firewall happening back here. And these are, of course, our shock absorbers going onto the rear. And there's some more uh, front uh, 
rear suspension going in here. We've got our firewall. Now remember this is rear engine, right? So our firewall is actually where the trunk panel would be if it was a engine in the front, conventional style. We've got some glass going in here and some scoops, I do believe. And then down here on our bottom panel, we have our rear axle. This is much like the Corvette and that sort of thing. So you've got your independent rear axle sitting up here and these would have universals in them going right into the, the transmission in the back. And then we've got our disc brakes and another set of spindles. And so as we repeat these steps, <laughs> these T-H-E-A-S-E, -E, as in like please with the T-H on the front, uh, repeat these step with right. So this is either showing you the left hand side. Okay, so that's step seven. Then we get into step eight. Now this is where the, the body goes together, or the interior. And the wheels, so, okay, there's a little cap here. Once we get our wheels assembled, you put them on there, and with those long pins sticking out, you've got to carefully put a little teeny drop of glue in there and hope it doesn't squeeze into here. <laughs> and there's four wheels and tires going on, and then it's saying to adjust the camber on here to 30 to 30 degree, or three dash 30 degrees so you're you're even adjusting the camber caster and camber in this car wow um, then of course our bucket seats going in there and now we get into our body down here step number nine painting of body so this is body alpine blue inside painted all flat black and then you got the silver for the uh, hood pins because remember this is opening up backwards right to a conventional car. Then we got these cool little hood scoops go on there and you paint the inside here flat black on your headlights and then we do have some imperial <laughs> imperial interior door panels which are going to glue in here and there. See so it goes weep and then bends around. Uh, those, of course, are flat black. Then here we get into our dashboard for this car. And it's got a couple little uh, rods that stick out here. It says the meter is white. <laughs> your speedometer. You got silver switches and grays and flat blacks. These, this here, are these. I don't think these are cigarette lighters. <laughs> okay, you've got your steering wheel going in. Now this is an interesting thing. This is molded together like this, but you cut these apart and then you pop them through and you glue them in through the roof. There's three little holes. I think these are some kind of marker lights. I'm not totally sure. They're roof mounted lights or there's some kind of scoop. Again, I need a little more research on this car. Unfortunately, I'm filming this at home and I don't have a computer, so I can't run upstairs and quickly YouTube, or, um, Google something to see how it worked. Uh, okay, so we've got a rear view mirror going in there and our clear red tail lights popping in the back of the body. And now we get into the glass. Now this is where it's kind of a trick in here. Actually, let's just move this up. There we go. Two, two panels in one shot. So the glass on this actually doesn't go from the inside out like in an AMT model kit or monogram or whatever. These actually pop into the frames from the outside in, which is a tricky way to glue glass in. What I'd like to use is a very tiny brush with some liquid glue and just pop the window and then go around the edge out here. And the liquid glue will, with the capillary reaction, go in along the edges and lock these windows in. I think that's what they're showing here, actually. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'd never noticed that before, but yeah, I think that's what they're showing. So you take the little brush with your glue and go just along the edge here. Once you position this in place. Okay, now here's all the headlights and the um, 
driving lights and everything that they used on this car. Because it's 24 hours of Le Mans, so you are going to be racing at night in some spots. In the dark. So here you got your back of your headlight. And then you've got the headlight itself, which is straight up and down. And then you have these light covers, which of course give it that aerodynamic look. Much like some of the Porsches had. And then down here we've got our driving lights. So they'd pop in. These guys go there, and then that one goes there. I've also seen some of these Alpines that had additional lights on the hood. But anyway. <clears throat> and then we have our final panel. I'll just zoom back out. And this shows what the, the body popping onto that frame, and then our pictures of it at the end. And then all in Japanese, the history of the, the car. <laughs> so uh, there's our instructions, and now we will take a look at the plastic components of our Alpine A210. Now we have the body of the Alpine A210, and it doesn't look too bad, but there are a lot of sink marks and inconvenient areas in this thing. So we start here, like if I shadow that, you can see you got a sink mark here and a sink mark there, which is dangerously close to the Alpine, um, the Alpine lettering here. And then our hood sinks down quite a bit here. So they must have made this model kit with uh, a multi-piece mold in the front. There's a sink mark in here and a sink mark there. So you can either fill those or just tell everybody that uh, some identical rocks hit right in the exact spots on the <laughs> as this was driving down the road. No, I'm just joking there. But anyway... Yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of a, a body jump here. So when you get your sandpapers on this, you're going to have to cross sand it and be very, um, very careful on how you use your sanding blocks in order to level it to make the, the overhanging front actually match up to the not overhanging back panel here. I don't know how well you can see that, but at any rate... There is an issue up front. This has those long, like old style refrigerator type uh, hinges here, external hinges for the door. This of course is to make it a little more lightweight because they are trying to race, right? I like these fins, how they have this nice, nice up sweep in here. It's kind of a nice styling cue. And if you look at it, you can see you got some really neat bat wing type fins, which uh, fins on the American cars were were starting to uh, disappear. Well, definitely disappear by this time frame. However, the French cars still kept them on. So it, the fins also helped with stability. Don't get me wrong there. There's some nice uh, detail on here, like this leather strap holding the hood on the one side. A couple little holes here for things. And then we've got the three on the roof. Uh, a nice line around here for your glass. And not a line for your glass, the, uh, the, the hood here to open up for our rear engine. However, when you flip this thing underneath, there's not only are there mold marks in here, they are sitting up high, which is good. These ones are low. But they're dirty. <laughs> they're very dirty from the mold release agents in here. So some good soap and water will hopefully get rid of that. But it's hard to know. Um, the nice thing is they don't really appear to be leaching up through the body. 
Although here it's a little apparent there's something going on there. But all in all, it's not too bad of a sculpt. There's some vent holes in here. And again, nothing you couldn't fix up. It will take you a little longer with this to uh, get it accurate. But that's the body of our A210. So next up we have our chassis. And again, I'm going to have to look at those instructions and try to sort out what they're talking about. Because they're talking about cutting it somewhere along here and along here, or something like that. And then adding in little strips of styrene and dropping these front pieces or something bizarre. And I'm, I'm just going to show you why I don't understand that at all. Um, any of you guys that have built this in the past, let me know, because eventually I will be building this. So it, write it in the comments section, like, did you do that and what are they talking about? <laughs> okay, because I don't get it. But anyway, here's our chassis. And you can see some of the, the tube framing in here. There are mold marks again. And these will have to be taken out with a number 16 hobby knife. There's, they're pretty excessive. You know, if we just lift this up to the camera a bit better, you can see like just how many are in here. So again, this is one of those what's in the box where um, after you see this, you may really want to second guess built, getting this model kit or not. Now I already paid my 10 bucks for this, which okay, now in our modern age is not much, but in this time period in 94 that was pretty substantial you know with inflation and what the money was back in the day anyway so I'm here to help <laughs> okay so here we go so these little pins I do believe were where the shock absorbers would mount onto on the bottom so just bear in that in mind there's a bit of a thing here where it got cut off the parts tree which you'll have to fix up but underneath here it's uh, pretty smooth. There's no mold marks. So this this is the better side of the uh, the plywood, if you will. Because <laughs> any of you guys that buy the uh, good one side plywood, these are almost what these these model kits are. They're good one side. And uh, which side is the good side is the question. Unfortunately, usually the not so good side is where all the detail is. I don't know why they do that, you know? We could have these mold marks on this side. Be easily accessible. We could just file them off, nice and neat. But unfortunately, they're all in between all the little um, frame bits and whatever else. So okay, there's quite a bit of flash on the model. I don't know if you can check that edge. Okay, now here's here's my question here. So if we're supposed to be sawing these off and dropping them down or whatever they're talking about, here's our body. Now just flip it upside down. And note how the chassis goes in here. See, it would be sitting on there. Now you might be thinking, okay, you're going to need to cut this and drop it down somehow. But how? Because it's not going to go underneath like, like that, right? And if you look here, when you... When you get this part of the chassis together, you're going to have to clean up in here a bit with a round file. But see, it gives it like that little AC Cobra kind of mouth there, you know? You know what I mean? Uh, if this is dropped in underneath, you're going to get something goofy like that. But not like this. So I don't know what they're talking about. So you guys that might have built this in the past, just let me know in the comments below if, if that's what they're talking about. Or are they talking about... You know, put a piece of masking tape along here and paint this side with your French blue and this side back here with your flat black. Like, maybe that's what they're talking about. Because that would make more sense. Because if you look at the, the curve of the body here... Oops. See, like, the fin comes out and then you got this sort of sunken in... Almost like a fuel tank in a way. Type of style, right? Old airplane fuel tanks. Um, it would make more sense if they're talking cut line to put a piece of masking tape because all this here would be your French Alpine blue and then this part would be your flat black. And same with the front. You know. So I'll study those instructions. You guys let me know in the comments below who have built this kit. And uh, yeah, I'd appreciate your help.
All right, so now we're going to get into the dark gray parts tree. And now here, I know it might be a little harder to see, but here we've got our transmission halves, our engine block, the uh, cylinder heads there, the timing chain cover and pulleys. I'll have to turn that over to see what this part is. There's some of the um, carburetor injector things, or the, the bodies for them. There's our front spindles for your posable wheels, and the rear spindles here, with our rear drum brakes, or disc brakes, and our front disc brakes here. There's our interior door panels, the steering wheel, and a lot of these suspension components, the tubular frame stuff, and little caps, <laughs> and there's the uh, shock absorber bits. Uh, lots of stuff. you got to be very careful getting these off the parts trees or they will fly across the room and you'll never ever see them again. There's our shock absorber bits, the bottoms and the tops with the longer pins. Yeah, some tricky stuff here. And of course if we turn it over, we've got the parts numbers molded onto the parts. Oh, that's our radiator. There we go. Woo, look at the sink marks. <laughs> That, those uh, hit a few stones, <laughs> pounded into our, our uh, fins on our radiator. Okay, so, yeah, it looks, there are a few mold marks on, and that's an inconvenient spot for mold marks. That's uh, where on the engine, sorry, on our transmission, those are the little blades that sit in here somewhere to allow the axle to get in, so... You want to get the mold marks off of there on, on that side, because that's where your wheels are going to be making contact. But anyway, there are quite a lot of bits and pieces on this that are very tiny. So take your time with it. Be very cautious, is all I can say. All right, so this parts tree originally had the chassis sitting in here, but I've, I've cut it out and I actually filmed it. So these are the little scoops and things that go with the body. And here we have our firewall, which again has the mold marks on the wrong side of this thing, but they are a little more accessible to get rid of because this is a flatter area. And here we have our dashboard, and there's a little, a neat little thing here. I'll just see if we can see it. I wonder if I shade it a bit. But anyway, this little thing says Made in Union. <laughs> it should say Made by Union, because that's the actual manufacturer. But anyway, it's so hard to see white plastic on this. But here we have our instrument panel, our um, dashboard. The instrument panel here has, of course, our gauges and the speedometer. And then we've got more stuff going on here. I don't know if they had a glove box on this. I, I don't think so, but hard to know for sure. Anyway, those are the those components. And again, if you turn the firewall over, you'll see that it's nice and flat, but there is a sink mark right here. So again, we'll have to putty that over and uh, cross sand it and try to get it as flat as possible. And unfortunately, there are mold marks right inside the innermost Part of these body scoops. So you got to get rid of those or else you're going to see them when you look inside the scoops. So there we go there. Hey everybody, this is Trevor Oselescu, owner of Monster Hobbies, and I wish to thank all of our patrons out there for your great support in keeping this channel alive. Without your contribution, we would not be around, so thank you again very much. And if you would like to become one of our patrons, please check it out at www.patreon.com forward slash monster underscore hobbies. Anyway, 
let's continue on with our great video. So now we have our clear components and there is a lot of glass on this car. So just again be careful with the glass. Remember it's going to mount from the outside in not the inside out. Whew. And these little side windows I almost lost them. They're just hanging on there by just the tiniest fraction of clear plastic. There's our side glass, our rear window, the little window that goes on the firewall. Then we've got our front windshield. Here is a clear scoop. These are our headlight covers and these are the driving light, fog light type covers. And then here's our little headlights. There's three here and the other one is here. So just keep that in mind. And our taillights which are molded clear. We're going to need some Tamiya Clear Red or the testers turn signal red I believe it's called uh, to cover those. Oh wait a sec these are headlights here so I'm not sure what these guys are. These might be the ones that pop up through the roof. Anyway I'll, I'll have to check the parts numbers with that. Um, and then we got that one there. <laughs> Okay, so that's our clear components, and unfortunately they were not put in a plastic bag like they do with the AMT kits. So these can get scratched by parts in the box, so just be careful with your glass. So now we have the rubber components of our kit, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky again. Because the rubber, I'm not sure what you need to glue it to the plastic. And this is a problem we got here with this kit. Um, here we also have our nice coil springs. These are actual brass coil springs or bronze ones. And uh, I'm leaving them in this plastic bag that they came in for obvious reasons. Now this is our distributor with the spark plug wires coming out, which is a nice touch because you can plug these into the top of your engine and bend them in shape and you're good to go. These little spaghetti noodles here are actually the um, exhaust manifolds and they're made out of this rubber stuff. And I'm not sure what this guy is here, <laughs> but it's also made of that rubber stuff, as are the seats. So again, the question is, how do you glue this into the car? Use crazy glue or what? And this is another reason why I never got this thing finished, because you're always with this question of how do you glue the seats in? How do you glue them so that they just don't fall out later? <laughs> so if you guys know of something I can use in there, crazy glue? I don't know. Just let me know in the comments below. But anyway, we have two sizes of tires. These ones are taller, they're for the rear. And these ones, of course, are for the front. Now I've built this one wheel up. you got a... Uh, white plastic wheel insert. This is kind of like the Lotus type wheels and stuff that they raced in England. And then we got a chrome beauty ring on here which is a nice touch. The tires are nondescript. It would be nice if they said Michelin. You know. Uh, but they don't. <laughs> but they do have a redeeming feature. They have a really nice tread pattern on them which is a little bit low, but more in scale than some of the other tires that are out there. Although they are, this is that the Japanese style soft rubber. It's not like the, um, here, like here's a AMT Goodyear tire. And this one's a hollow kind of thing, but this is a solid rubber. And it is very squishy. <laughs> so it's not like hard, you know. But anyway, there's our tires and our rubber components. And now we get into my favorite components, which of course are the chrome pieces. And like I said, I've used these parts here for that one wheel, wheel and tire combination. Here we have our little universals in chrome for the rear axle. They're, I'm not sure where these little tiny guys are, I can't see from here. <laughs> but this would be our gear stick lever, I believe. 
Uh, anyway, there's our rear view mirror. And here's the wheel front and back so beauty rings. And then we've got our headlight backings. So they're actually chrome plated. There's our rack and pinion style steering. And our little intakes for our carburetor. I, th I think number 71 is a windshield wiper. I'm not sure. I can't really see from here. The uh, detail on here, let's just move this up. It, it has some nice little detail bits to it, but not too much on the chrome. Oh yes, it is a windshield wiper. <laughs> it's a dual arm style windshield wiper. So anyway, there we go. These, of course, are also little chrome components go somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, nice, interesting plating on there. Um, not quite as thick as the uh, American style plating found in like an AMT kit or something. It's just sort of more there, you know what I mean? And last but not least, we have our deck hall sheet. And here, you they give you the white circle. It's a little, on mine now, it's gone a little off-white. It's more sort of like a very light beige. But here, if you, you know, look at this, you can make car number 45 by putting a 4 there and a 5 there. Or you can do car 44, right, by putting it there and there. You could actually make a car 54, but I, I don't know if they had a car 54. <laughs> we'll have to look this up on the internet one day. Oh, and there I go bouncing this off. There's some interesting uh, Alpine kind of decals. I'm not sure where they would go on the real car, if they even went on there. Here's a French logo for sponsorship. And then we've got some white pinstripes on here for the body. And that concludes our look at our Alpine A210 by Union Model Company from Japan. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that creme de la creme as we looked at our 1966 Alpine A210 by Union. A model company we don't really hear too much on our shores, but I got one. <laughs> All right, now before I go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are one of the first people to ever see it on this entire planet. Won't that be good? Now, let's get this thing up to 100 likes so that if somebody is looking to find this thing on the racetrack, they can and will because we all made it happen. So until next time, race fans, we'll see you once again down in the pits. Happy racing! <laughs>